just God, it's amazing. Life is just a marathon, so pace it. Rush pain, that thing's hate me, Damon's. Life ain't gotta be hard, just keep it basic. Welcome back to Fort Meade Declassified. We're your hosts, Gloria Ann Martin and Jasmine Ferber from the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office. And today we're here to talk to you about the significant moments that shaped Fort Meade in 2023. Hi, Gloria Ann. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jasmine. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm hanging in there. Oh. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know where to go from this. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Chad when we need him? I know. <laughs> All right. So um, from community covenants to military enlistments, uh, sports victories to groundbreaking ceremonies, uh, we've got the inside scoop on the remarkable events that made this year truly exceptional. So grab your favorite beverage, kick back, and join us as we dive into the Fort Meade 2023 year in review. I like that line. Thanks. Chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's look back on this year. A major thing that happened was that we had the Community Covenant signing back in August. Yeah, that was a great event. Lots mm -hmm. of community members came out for that. I think it was about, what, 80 people, I think? Yeah. Um, um, yeah. It's Secretary Woods there um, with the Department of Veterans Affairs for Maryland. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a lot of heavy hitters mm -hmm. in the Fort Meade region. And we were also uh, recognized as one of the five great American defense communities. Let's see what else happened. Oh, uh, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin came to Fort Meade back in July and swore in almost, I think, 100 enlistees um, into the armed forces. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that wasn't the only one that we had. We also had General Randy George, um, he, the Vice Chief of Staff of the Army, also came for an enlistment ceremony this mm -hmm. year, too. Yeah, I'm sure that really uh, made an impact on those young recruits. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. To have someone at that high level to come and be there at the beginning of your career, mm -hmm. it's probably quite an honor. You know, and some of them are pretty young. It was, I think there was a 17-year-old there, too, so that was probably like a really memorable moment for them. Well, speaking of our recruits, we also did a groundbreaking ceremony for the Freedom Center Five enlisted personal housing barracks on November 9th. So mm -hmm. that's a big step in the right direction for those of you do, who don't know, there's old barrack housing that's located on NSA campus. Um, so to get them removed from NSA campus, we're actually having new barracks built in a different location that's more accessible to our soldiers. In the land of sports and entertainment, uh, Mead High School varsity boys basketball team made it all the way to the state championship back in March, which oh, yeah. is a pretty big accomplishment. Yeah, we did mm -hmm. another podcast episode on that with them as well. There mm -hmm. were a couple seniors who came out. Very One of uh, them, I think, is had a lot of um, plans for after college, too, mm -hmm. or after high school. Yeah. And I think they both had ties to the base as well, like their parents served. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. they did. And both their coaches came out. goes to show like how much support they mm -hmm. have in the community from not only um, the installation, um, but also from their coaches and their teachers. Mm -hmm. Well, in regards to entertainment, um, <laughs> one of the recruiters from the Baltimore Recruiting Battalion uh, Staff Sergeant Talia Smith also appeared on The Voice. She was mm -hmm. on Team Nile for a little bit. Yeah, I so was low-key jealous of her because she got to meet Nile Horn. Yeah, I was also jealous. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, something mm -hmm. for the whole world to know now, apparently. <laughs> Gloria Ann was a directioner. No, you don't have to tell them that. <laughs> this is, oh dear. <laughs> I'm too professional for this. <laughs> um, another great thing that we got to do was... Mm -hmm. A lot of community events this year yeah there were so many big ones there was the red white and blue event mm -hmm. that was a really big fourth of july celebration for not just the fort Meade installation for but for the community as a whole even off the post mm -hmm. um yeah it was a great event um it did rain it was a little hectic at first yeah. but you know the team came together in the end and we were able to start um the event on time and 
I've just heard nothing but great things about it. I know people were really missing it um, from previous years due to COVID. So we're really excited about having it again next year. On top of that, a couple other things that we did in the community was a trunk or treat a celebration at the National Cryptologic Museum as well as a wellness fair, community information expo, and hundreds of retirees actually came out for our recent retiree appreciation day. And that was a big, really successful event that we hope to mm -hmm. continue to put on for the years to come. It's awesome. And we also had a lot of events with the schools, um, with the Meat Cluster, uh, the Meat Cluster spring event, where they had uh, the unveiling of Mustang Way for, oh, yeah. mm -hmm for the high school, and I think they're planning on renaming the the road in front of the middle school as well. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. I think that that's forthcoming, um, from what I know, inside scoop here. <laughs> um, they will plan to rename it in the next year, mm -hmm. probably at one of their other um, Mead Cluster events. In addition to that, we also had some U.S. Army veterans, um, part of Wish of a Lifetime, come and visit the installation. Mm -hmm. They hadn't been here for 60 years. Could you believe that? They had been friends that long? I don't even know if I'm friends with people I went to high school with. That's a <laughs> long time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were supposed to talk at, like, pop culture events, too. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> I guess we have to talk about it. Um, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, you got some knowledge to drop on us about that? I have, I don't really know anything about Yeah, so Taylor Swift was named Times Person of the Year. I don't know how I know this, I'm not a Swiftie. Oh, I saw that, I, I saw that on Facebook or something And she had morning. like her cat wrapped around her yes. neck. Yes, yeah, one of my friends from high school, she posted it to her story and she called it iconic. Oh my god. It's like, god. okay, we all have different tastes, but... <laughs> no offense to any Swifties out there. <laughs> but anyway, during her Times Magazine interview, she officially uh, talked about her and Travis Kelsey's relationship for the first time. Uh, the things and that you learn on the internet. I know. I'm too much. On I'm online too much. Um, but chronically yeah. online is I, what they call it, right? <laughs> the Gen Zs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Aren't she, we technically Gen Zs? Are you not a Gen Z? I'm millennial. I was born oh, in 94. I'm a, I'm a Gen Z. You're a cusper. Association. You're a cusper, oh, though. I like that. Yeah. A cusper. <laughs> Just right know, on the line. kind of sounds like custard. <laughs> Because, so my husband is 20, uh, 20, 25, he was 25 when we met, but he's <laughs> five years older than me, so he's 30 mm -hmm. now. Um, so we have a lot of, like, different similarities in our childhood, mm -hmm. so he, like, grew up with TVs that have, like, little knobs on them, and <laughs> I have never seen a knob Wait. TV in my lifetime. Is Austin older than me? I, he's 30. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, oh, obviously, like... You just talked about it, but yeah. I didn't know before. Oh, yeah. He's, and so, and he'll talk about, like, dial-up internet and stuff, mm -hmm. and I think I was maybe a year or two after dial-up <laughs> internet, so I didn't grow up with that. So, it's funny, because, so, my husband, John, he's four years older than me, so he's 33, and when I was younger, I was overseas, because my parents were in the Army, and so a lot of the things that happened here, I wasn't really exposed to. So he'll just like talk about all these things that happen, like pop culture wise. I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yes, I even though yeah. like we're so close in age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I completely re relate. <laughs> I spent the first eight years of my life in Korea and Japan. Mm -hmm. And so I was born at the tail end of my dad's Air Force career. Um, and I didn't grow up watching the classic like kids <laughs> cartoons. I grew up watching Sailor Moon as a child. <laughs> So you probably noticed that our angle has switched now because our camera died. Uh, <laughs> but what were we talking about? Um, we were talking about growing up overseas. Yes. But we can kind of bring it back a little bit to Fort uh -huh. Meade, which is what we're here to talk about <laughs> um, after we had our pop cultural dive. Yes. I think uh, that's enough for now. Taylor right? Swift. Taylor Swift was the highlight of 2023. That's all we need yeah. to know. Um, okay, so circling back to year in review because... <laughs> We I got think. really derailed there. It's <laughs> um, supposed to be a short. <laughs> yes, it's supposed to be 10 minutes long. Um, oh, so uh, Lieutenant Governor Aruna Miller uh, visited, uh, along with Maryland Secretary of Veterans Affairs, um, Anthony Wood. 
Yeah, that was a big day mm-hmm. for the installation because I think we had multiple events going on that day. Mm-hmm. Um, if not that day, I think it was that week, we also had the meeting and, uh, with multiple senior spouses um, of the Department of Defense members. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Oh, also the community came out um, to clean up the Kaboom playground behind the Post Library. Oh, yeah. It was there a were, big effort. Mm-hmm, there were mm-hmm. a lot of volunteers for that. Mm-hmm. And lots of bags of mulch. Yes. And Giant seen so much truck mulch. fulls <laughs> of mulch. I don't know how they moved all that. I can barely mm-hmm. get myself to mulch my garden. <laughs> In order to add on top of... Um, community additions. We actually also had a chains of responsibility ceremony for the headquarters command battalion. Mm -hmm. Um, So sadly, we are saying goodbye to our previous command sergeant major. Mm -hmm. Brian Sanders. Yes. And Mm -hmm. um, he will be, he will be missed. Yes. He was a great addition. He really helped out, like, especially the PAO shop when we needed um, support. He was just always, like, readily and willing to help out. Mm -hmm. He was a great person. Yeah, I know that everyone loved him. Mm -hmm. I I think that was the biggest audience I had ever seen. Oh, really? For a change of responsibility ceremony, like, in the Mm -hmm. three years that I've worked in public (laughs) affairs, which is not a very long time, I will add. But it was (laughs) there were quite a few people. For anyone who knows, it was in the um, Club Mead Auditorium, Mm -hmm. and it filled up probably both sides of that auditorium. Oh, that's a big space. Yes. Wow. He made an impact in his career. He did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the new mm-hmm. Sergeant Major has mm-hmm. big shoes to fill, but mm-hmm. I know that um, everyone is confident that he will do a good job. Yes. So on top of that, we had a couple of big events um, involving the new governor of Maryland, Wes Moore. Um, back in May, there was an event with one of our community covenant partners, uh, BWI Partnership, where uh, Colonel Sapp was in attendance and um, Governor Moore was uh, the, the key speaker. Oh, yeah, I remember mm-hmm. that one. It was the BWI signature yeah. breakfast. Mm-hmm. Yes, and they actually host those every month. Yeah, and I think Colonel Sapp was uh, the keynote speaker at one of them. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh. Our community relations chief, she's actually Monique McFadden. I mm-hmm. think she's actually helping host one. Oh, the nice. next couple months. I don't know if it's this month or next month, but mm-hmm. um, she mentioned in a previous meeting that she's also helping out with that. So um, we love getting involved and working with our partners as much as we can. Mm-hmm. It's really important to us. Yeah, it really helps to bring the community together. Yeah, and on top of that, including talking more about um, partnerships, um, we were also there when the ribbon cutting ceremony took place for the opening mm-hmm. of the Severance Center. Yes. And I know that's been a big resource to the community for both um, uh, the senior citizens in our community, but also mm-hmm. the addition of the Boys and Girls Club that's yeah. on the other side of that building. Mm-hmm. Um, other grand opening ri- ribbon cuttings that we've had, uh, the opening of the DOCS Dental Clinic oh, at yeah. the Exchange. Mm-hmm. That's exciting. Yeah, I see it every time Mm -hmm. I go to the PX. I'm like, oh, maybe I should just go to the dentist here. It's pretty convenient. Mm -hmm. And we also want to say a big thank you to the Baltimore Orioles for inviting our Fort Meade families to Camden Yards. A great time to honor um, our military families Mm -hmm. with some fun opportunities in the community. I just want to say thank you so much to the Fort Meade community um, for your participation and support throughout this year um, with different events that the installation has had. Um, we're excited to bring you even more events next year and the years to follow. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even throughout the holiday season, make sure you remember to stay connected with us on social media and Digital Garrison for the latest mm-hmm. installation updates. Whether you've been listening or watching, thank you for joining us today. We appreciate your support and enthusiasm for the Fort Meade community. From all of us here at Fort Meade Declassified, we wish you and your loved ones a joyous holiday season. Mm-hmm. Also, don't forget to mark your calendars because we'll be back with more exciting updates and stories in our next episode. Um, Until then, stay connected, stay informed, and most importantly, stay engaged with Fort Meade. Happy holidays, and we'll catch you next time on Fort Meade Declassified.